everyone. I will be overviewing a simple short-term research process. Now, this process is typically used in single phase research. Uh, there are lots of other processes. As we know, research is dynamic. Um, hence, even within this process, there could be fluctuation. But this is what I typically teach my students who are doing research for the first time and have a very short time to complete their project, just to ensure that they know the next steps and can plan for them. So the first step is, of course, to have a very good uh, topic. And you want to have a topic that you are passionate about, uh, because when the going gets tough, uh, this is something your passion will hopefully carry you through uh, the project. Now, uh, I always advise my students to select a topic um, that is also very specific. I know once um, you get to a higher stage in your in in the research pro uh, process, especially at graduate level, you can, you know, you have the poetic license to to be very creative. Now, I I ask the students to keep their topics uh, simple and specific, more so specific, uh, because this provides guidance for them when they're writing their research questions um, and when they're uh, reviewing the literature. So for example, I work in the School of Early Childhood Education. So uh, instead of saying uh, play in early childhood education spaces, I would advise them to say nature-based play in kindergarten classes in Toronto, uh, for example. Therefore, when they get to the next stage in terms of writing uh, their research question, uh, they already have the variables that they, they um, need to look at. So in terms of um, building on that research topic now, their research question could be, uh, what are kindergarten educators' perspective on nature-based uh, play um, in their classes or in their um, uh, their spaces, or what are to, to use uh, uh, location as, as also a guiding factor. So what are kindergarten educators um, in Toronto's perspective on nature-based play in their um, classroom. So this will also ensure that when you're beginning to do your literature review, uh, then you know that you're looking for a very specific focus. And I find that, you know, starting off with being very specific is helpful because for new students, they have all these ideas around what they want to do their research on. And so they search a multitude of, um, you know, studies aligned with what they want to do. And so perhaps they want to focus on just nature-based play um, and it's very broad. And so what I find when uh, students are doing their initial literature review, that they're looking only at nature-based play or early childhood educators' um, perspective on nature-based play, uh, rather than zoning in on that aspect of uh, kindergarten educators in Toronto's uh, perspective on nature based play. So you have to be, you have to ensure that all of those uh, variables are there when you're looking for um, and searching the existing literature, because if not, then you'll, you'll get um, a literature review that is not aligned with your, your topic. And I often ask question, uh, students question about what does this have to do you, with your topic? Uh, so if you're unable to find the specific area, then you can list this as a gap in the research, which is um, awesome to have to, to be able to identify these gaps because really your research project is to add to existing knowledge, hence to help fill gaps in the research. Um, and so when you then look at the literature, you're sh showing how your, your research project will fill the gaps. So once you go to collect uh, your data, you first you, you develop your tool to collect your data, um, but once you then develop your tool, you're writing questions uh, that will, of course, provide answers to your research topic, but also help you to fill this specific gap that you identify. So when you collect your data, whether from primary or secondary um, sources, primary sources being, of course, uh, participants, um, I 
as again, short-term research. So most of the, the uh, students I work with are collecting uh, data from um, participants, whether through interviews or surveys, or um, students can collect data from existing sources, which are um, you know, secondary data collection. However, we discourage them from doing that just to ensure that they get um, that practice with the research process. Uh, so you collect your data and after collecting your data, you analyze your data. Now you have to ensure that you're not just doing a summary of your data, but you're looking for nuances in the responses to ensure um, that you're, you're seeing how um, your responses are similar, but also differences. And I always tell students, you're also looking for the shade of gray in, um, in, in your participants' responses or in the data that you're collecting. Once you've collect, um, collected your data, now you have to organize your, your data to produce or your, your data analysis to produce a finding section. So note that you're not just uh, you know, submitting your, your, your data analysis, but you're also um, organizing it, adding your thoughts and, and, and opinions, um, and also connecting to the existing literature in your findings. Now, in more recent um, in, in, in more recent years, there is a combination of this comparison and contrasting of um, your, your findings with existing literature. Uh, so that being your discussion. Uh, and this ensures that um, you're producing that nuanced, deep, thoughtful, um, analysis and of, of your research, but also showing how you have filled that gap or, or contributing to existing um, existing knowledge, right? So we mentioned um, filling the gap in um, that you identify in your literature review, you have to ensure that you have this consistent conversation with the literature, um, even as you discuss your findings to produce a very nuanced uh, report. Now, there are many ways of producing your report um, to summarize your, your research in more traditional spaces, um, which is um, where I operate. It is typically a written document, uh, but in other cases, it could be a presentation. Um, it could also be um, a product that you, you develop. Um, you know, it could be some in some cases, especially if you're looking at art space research, uh, these can take um, dances, et cetera, uh, with a small written um, document as well. So thank you very much. I hope you find this uh, very useful. Uh, we, I will do a sequence of, of videos on uh, various aspects that were mentioned here, especially the literature review um, and the, speaking about the gaps in the research. Hi. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.